Hey guys. So I became an engineer because I like solving problems. And when there's uh, DIY home automation involved, then there are a lot of problems to solve. So today's problem is controlling Windows PCs with Home Assistant. Uh, this is needed for me because my children are getting older and now they have their own PCs. Plus my wife has her PC and I have my own PC and software updates and statuses and generally checking on those becomes a burden. And I thought to myself, why I can just uh, try to integrate these with Home Assistant. And this is exactly what I, show you, I will show you today. So if you're interested, keep on watching. But first, if you're new to the channel, my name is Laszlo Marcel, and this channel deals with home automation, home networking, and sometimes with related stuff like the electronics and even a little bit of 3D printing. Anyway, let's continue with today's topic. As it is usual, my adventure started with a piece of software. This time it's called IoT Link and it's an open source one. Also, as I mentioned in the intro, sadly this is for Windows only, so I assume uh, some of my viewers will drop off at this point. Okay, no harm done guys, I understand, uh, it is frustrating even for me, so I'm still searching for a similar solution. But anyway, let's uh, go just with Windows right now and um, as I mentioned, if I find a similar solution there will be a separate video in the future about that. Ok, now with that done, uh, IoT Link itself is pretty awesome. So it enables you to control and monitor your Windows PC through MQTT. And because the MQTT integration, it's an easy way to integrate with Home Assistant. So if you just uh, take a look at the features, it provides you ways to control it, like shutting down, rebooting, whatnot. Then it provides you monitoring. And uh, the best thing is that uh, it's really easy to use, so um, we won't even waste uh, time on uh, showing you the installation steps because you just literally uh, go to downloads and then you download it, it's an ex executable installer and then uh, you install it on your Windows machine. And after that you will only have to configure the MQTT broker and the credentials for IoT Link so it can connect to your broker. And pretty much that's it. After that point it will uh, send MQTT messages and it will receive MQTT messages as well. So let me just quickly show you the configuration file and then let's go to Home Assistant to integrate this. To change the configuration of IoT Link uh, your job is pretty easy. So you will just go to your search box and you should search for an entry code open configuration file. So for me it's in the recent list of, of course, but uh, you can just start typing and uh, you will see it has an icon that matches the color scheme of IoT Link. And uh, this will open up your default text editor with the configuration file inside. So the configuration file is just a normal text file, no problem. So let's just open it. Okay, there we go. So as I mentioned, this is quite a simple file, although it has a lot of options, but by default you don't have to care much about those. So your main point here is MQTT configuration. You just edit your username, your password, uh, your hostname or IP address. This points to your MQTT broker and pretty much that's it. Also, uh, you can set up security like TLS and stuff like that. Actually, there's a link here pointing to the documentation of the project detailing all the document, all the configuration uh, settings you can play around with. Okay, so let's assume that uh, we have uh, set this and then you need to restart the service because this thing is running as a Windows service total in the background. So for that also two additional start menu entries are created so once again just go back to search and uh, start typing windows service and you can see similarly colored icons start windows service stop windows service guess what this one uh, shuts down the service this one restarts it so after changing any settings your job is quite easy you just execute this one first then this one and after that the whole thing is set up 
and start sending its messages to your broker. So now let's take uh, a look on Home Assistant and continue with configuration there. In case of Home Assistant, your job is also quite easy. So you just open Home Assistant, go to Configuration, then Integrations, and assuming that you have MQTT integration up and running, and to be honest, why wouldn't you be? Then uh, uh, you will see that a whole bunch of devices are added by IoT Link. So as you can see, there are multiple pieces and actually um, for us, for my family, there are four machines uh, integrated at the moment and then there are several devices for each machine. So you can use these devices to gather information and uh, create a nice, uh, let's say, lovely dashboard or something like that from these. So just let me show you an example. I have this dashboard. So as I can see that uh, some of the devices are online. This is my wife's, she is still online. And uh, this is mine, the kids are sleeping, so their pieces are offline as well. As you can see, I did a bunch of buttons here, so I can remotely uh, lock down, hibernate, reboot, shutdown, and actually turn on the pieces. Now turning on is a bit of a, a special thing here because uh, this is not happening with the help of IoT Link. This is happening with Wake Online. I will get back to that later. But now let's just focus on IoT Link. So these are all sensors and uh, their values are uh, periodically populated via MQTT. So you can just add them. So let me show you the configuration, how this looks like for my lovely UI. So I just edit this dashboard, then let's say this one, and uh, you can see all these sensors. So those are quite self-explanatory, their naming and uh, the whole thing is quite easy to use. So just uh, created this little uh, entry with the code editor and um, Actually, this is uh, also not coming from IoT Link. This is a ping, which is uh, a binary sensor, also uh, provided by Home Assistant by default. Uh, you can set it up via configuration YAML file. And as you can see, uh, for these buttons, this is the interesting part. Uh, I just call MQTT Publish, which is a default uh, service call for MQTT, and then uh, I just uh, trigger a topic. Now, as you can see, these topics are uh, Node-RED, but you can send messages to the topic uh, provided by IoT Link. But I use Node-RED because of visualization and because uh, easier editing of the flows. So I rather not uh, integrate uh, different services here. I just send everything to Node-RED and we'll have these things sorted out there. So for example, uh, let's say this is my machine and I want to make uh, a lock button here. So I have this button which goes to the topic node red trigger rise and lock rise and is the name of the machine. So if I open up node red, you can see this flow. Uh, those are just uh, those messages, I mean those topics, those are getting captured here and then uh, and then uh, those are triggering uh, messages sent to a different topic and uh, these topics are uh, coming from IoT Link. So when you start IoT Link and uh, take a look on it in uh, its log files, it will tell you that uh, it will use a topic IoT link slash workgroup. I think this is always workgroup. Then the lowercase, let's say URL if I'd uh, ver version of the name of your PC. So basically space is removed, uh, all turned into lowercase and stuff like that and then comments and then the comment. So these are all documented as part of the documentation of uh, IoT Link. You should not uh, have problems with them. 
also as I'm showing you there's a few examples here but those are all self-explanatory and easy so instead of lock the next one hibernate or shut down the last uh, segment of the topic will be uh, different and also there's no payload needed here so just let me show you hibernate once again totally the same is instead but uh, except instead of lock now we have hibernate here and the list goes on so basically i just created this because let's say i want to do something special uh, instead of uh, locking the pc like uh, sending uh, notification or something like that also now that i mentioned uh, sending a notification uh, there's a funny thing you can actually send uh, push notifications to the pc to the given pc via iot link so i just uh, set this up here uh, actually this is triggered by a uh, state change whether i uh, shut down my desk light it will uh, trigger a push notification and it will just uh, send a notification to this pc it's pretty much a dumb solution but uh, it was nice for demonstration pur purposes so once again um, as you can see iot link workgroup rise and comments those are the same then we have notify but for this one there's also payload so i actually send a message here and uh, a title because a small uh, toast uh, notification pop-up will appear on my windows desktop when i uh, turn this light on Alexa, turn on the desk light Obviously using a service like that just to send notifications doesn't make really much sense. But this is the good part. So IoT Link is extendable and by default it comes with two add-ons. So these add-ons are uh, monitor for monitoring and for uh, controlling your Windows system. Actually um, the notification i just uh, demonstrated it's uh, part of the commands add-on so just let's take a quick look on the commands add-on to see what can it do for you so the documentation is there for describing each command and uh, it even provides you some examples actually direct examples from uh, for home assistant as well so you can shut down the system you can reboot the system hibernate suspend log uh, the system log off the current user uh, you can control the media player and then uh, you can turn off the displays you can send keys this is like sending a hotkey and actually you can remotely run applications so in my opinion this one is uh, kind of dangerous so you have to be extra hyper careful when you're doing this but uh, it's actually quite useful also, oh, this is the one I mentioned, sending notification and so on. So this is for the command add-on and for the monitoring add-on. As you could see in uh, Home Assistant, there's a lot of information provided. So just let's uh, take a quick look. So power status, battery status in case of a notebook, information about the user, uh, uptime, idle time, boot time, CPU sensors, memory, and so on. As you can see, it's a lot. So with these add-ons, by default enabled, IoT Link can do a lot of things for you. And if you think of it, you can actually set a chain using iot link using home assistant and using your favorite voice assistant to for example instruct your voice assistant to start a specific application on your windows pc or shut down your windows pc or reboot your windows pc or whatever so this looks quite fun one last thing left that i mentioned that is uh, iot link is not capable not capable of is uh, actually turning on your machine because well if the machine is not running then iot link is not running then you won't be able to use it so that's kind of obvious and for that you will need to use uh, wake on LAN. 
VacanLAN is a separate functionality and um, it's, it's not part of Home Assistant or not part of uh, IoT Link, but it's uh, pretty much a standard that has been on in PCs from, I think, from the late 90s or maybe from the early 2000s. So it's point is, it's been there for years, but it is pretty much standard nowadays. To be honest, I really don't go into details with Wakeonland because uh, enabling and properly setting up Wakeonland is uh, well a separate topic for a separate video. And I guess there are a lot of tutorials out there. And uh, actually those steps for setting it up uh, kind of depend on your operating system and on your BIOS. So just let's uh, leave it at that. Assuming that your PC is capable of uh, to be awakened uh, via LAN, uh, you can use a Home Assistant integration to do that. That Home Assistant integration is called Wake on LAN, obviously, and it's quite easy to use. So you don't have to uh, expect anything uh, fancy here, like a UI or something like that, but instead you just use the configuration YAML file to enable it with a single line and then you can uh, execute a service uh, called send magic packet which uh, takes a single parameter which is the mac address this is the physical uh, lan uh, address of your pc on the same network and you can use this to implement that uh, missing functionality so with this and with iot link you have full control over your windows pc so, what do you think about this solution? I'm not saying it's the most sophisticated one, but it definitely works. And uh, we also managed to accomplish all goals with open source software, so it's definitely good enough for me. If you have uh, an idea, a question, or a story to share that is uh, related to the topic of today's video, feel free to use the comments. Uh, other than that, I think it's time to conclude today's video, so thanks for watching it. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please consider subscribing. I'm trying my best to upload uh, a new video each week. And well, with that, I hope to see you next time, next week, with another video. Bye.